As developers, we need to automate as much as possible. This saves us time and money, as well as this keeps us from being lazy. I used to have a project where I run my tests manually before I push them into production. And it started out taking one to five minutes, and that was fine because I could just start the test running and then go use the bathroom and get a warm cup of coffee. But eventually it grew and grew until it was 30 minutes, and that was just too long for me to sit around and wait for my tests to pass. The solution to that is to run automated tests on a different computer using some sort of a solution for that. Now we want to integrate the, that solution as closely as possible to our source code so that every time we make a change, that automation happens immediately and automatically. Thankfully, GitHub provides actions to do this. In this video, we'll describe what GitHub actions are, how to use them, and work through an example of setting them up in our example project. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren. And on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you follow our channel so that you can get new videos as they're pushed out. And make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. Now at a very high level, GitHub Actions allow developers to automate the tasks that they need to on their source code. This includes running tests and building assets, as well as running tools that will automatically refactor or publish our solutions. GitHub allows us to require these actions so we can't merge in changes to our main branch before they pass. The really powerful part about GitHub Actions is that they run in a container, so we can basically install whatever we need to in order to get our code running and tested. It also makes our GitHub Actions infinitely scalable. We can have five developers running five actions at the same time, and it's not going to cause a problem. As PHP developers, it's almost dead simple for us to get a GitHub action set up to run tests on our code and to do some static code analysis as well. GitHub actions are kept as YAML files inside of a GitHub directory inside of a repository so we can very easily integrate it with our source code. Now I've used third party tools in the past to do this sort of test automated testing before and they just weren't as smooth as GitHub actions. Partly it was because the integration of GitHub Actions into GitHub's workflow is so smooth because it's built on the same core, but part of it is because it just works very well. We used to use Jenkins and it always had delays and it would take a long time and it was expensive to maintain and to build. More after this word from our sponsors. When you're in production, a thousand things can go wrong. You could deploy a bug in your latest release. Your background jobs can silently fail. Someone could trip over the network cable at your data center. And this all comes back to you. You need to know when bad things happen and be able to respond to them quickly. That's why we built HoneyBadger. It's easy to install HoneyBadger in your backend applications and front-end JavaScript. It only takes a few minutes of configuration and you'll have monitoring done. That's because we hook into popular web frameworks, job systems, and the browser so that when any of them crash, we can automatically let you know. We ping your application from our global fleet of servers to let you know about problems with connectivity, latency, and SSL certificates. And we monitor your recurring jobs to see if any of them stop recurring. When there's a problem, we alert your team using the tools you already use. We can create issues in GitHub, Jira, and other issue trackers, and send notifications via Slack, PagerDuty, or other channels. When you click through, you'll be taken to detailed information on the error. You'll see things like request parameters, headers, user information, and the backtrace. Click on any line of the backtrace to view it in GitHub, Bitbucket, or your local editor. When you fix a problem, just mark it resolved and follow up with the affected user. That's HoneyBadger. We're the monitoring tool for web developers who'd rather be, well, developing. The GitHub repository that's on our screen right now is our example project that we've been working on for several videos now. It allows us to use value objects inside of our project. Now, there's not much to it right now. There's only a few files, but it's an excellent test bed to try out our GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions exist inside the Actions tab of our project. So when we first go to this Actions, if we don't have an action set up already and it hasn't run, it's going to suggest that we get started with us. Because this is a PHP project, it's already kind of suggesting which um, actions we should use. Now we could write the YAML file ourselves, but it's so much easier just to press that configure button and have the most current uh, set of standards. 
After I press that configure button, it's going to bring us to a GitHub editor that allows us to see the file that it's about to create and allow, allow, and allow us to edit it. As you can see, it's automatically putting it in the .github slash workflows directory. And we can call it whatever we want, but we're going to keep it called php.yaml right now just to make it a little bit easier to, to manage. Looking at this file, it's a very basic configuration. The first line is giving us the name of the action, which is PHP Composer. Lines three through seven are configuring how the action should run. So it's saying that it's going to run every time we push to the main branch and run any time there's a pull request to the main branch. This means that if we have a project or various release branches, they will not run automatically unless we configure that inside of this file. The next piece is just telling GitHub that it needs read access to our repository and it's not going to be writing any data to it. If we had a more complicated action that actually needed to do that, like it was building things, then it might we might need that write access. The next section is the jobs. And this is actually the where the meat of the action occurs and where we're telling GitHub exactly what it is that it's going to do in order to run our action. The first thing that we're doing is we're telling it we need to run on the latest version of Ubuntu. And then we're going into the actual steps of the action, which in this case are the action slash checkout, which causes our repository to get checked out into our Docker container. Then we are running a validate run on the composer file. Then we're using a cache step that will save the results of our composer install and not in, not download those packages every time that we run the action. And then finally, in the default setup, we actually have the piece where it's telling composer to install the packages. Now, you might notice it's not actually running our tests. And we have two ways to fix that. The first is that we can add to our composer.json the actual test run, which does work and is functional, but I actually like just keeping it inside of the, um, the GitHub action because you can have multiple steps for your tests and it's a little bit easier to maintain to keep it all in the one file. Now we have a basic file created, so I'm gonna click that start commit button to actually integrate this into our repository. I'm gonna give it a name and then click commit new file. Now that we've committed that file, we've gone to the actual page where the YAML file is, and we can see a couple of things. The first is, is that there's this little dot here. Oh, and it just became a green check mark. And so the little dot was indicating that our actions were currently in progress of running. When it's yellow, there's still something that needs to be done. And if it fails, it'll turn red. And if it's good, it'll have a green check mark. If we want more details on the action as it's running, we can always click on one of these little, the little check marks or the yellow dots, or we can click the actions tab to get us in to see what was going on. And now because we've actually run our action, we actually have results inside this window and we can click on the commit message to actually see what happened inside of that run. Now, as a library maintainer, one of the things that we have to always be aware of is making sure that we're supporting multiple versions of PHP. Now, as you may have noticed, we only ran our action on one version of PHP and I'm not even really sure what it is. My guess is it's 8.1 because that's what is currently supported in Ubuntu. But what if we wanted to run it on multiple versions to make sure that we were still supporting it for all the supported versions? In order to do this, we're going to add a couple of options. The first is the strategy option, which allows us to define a matrix of different versions that we want to support. And they kind of multiply each other. So we could have two versions of PHP that we support and two versions of MySQL that we support, and they, they would end up running four different tests. For this example, what we're going to do is we're going to tell that we want to support PHP versions 8 and 8.1. In order to do that, we're going to add this strategy section. And then we also need to add another step that actually sets up PHP inside of our container. Now, in order to demo how the GitHub actions integrate into the pull request feature inside of GitHub, I'm actually going to create a pull request for this. So I created a branch and I committed my changes and I'm going to push those changes to GitHub. Once I do so, we'll see this nice little pop-up that says we can create a pull request. We're going to give it a nice name and then click create, click create pull request. Now our pull request is created. And because we specified that we were going to run the actions when we create a pull request against the main branch, GitHub is automatically running those tests for us. And we can see the results of those actions inside of the pull request. As you can see, our 8.0 branch is failing, but our 8.1 branch is passing. Now, in order to see why the 8.0 branch failed, we can click on this details and it will bring us over into the actual results for our action. And as we can see here, we have multiple packages that 
we have locked in at the 8.1 version that don't work in 8, so we have to go back and fix that. But because we did it on a branch and GitHub ran the actions for us, we know about the problem before we pushed it to main and potentially broke it for somebody. If I scroll all the way back up to the top of the screen and click on summary, it gives us this really nice little graph that shows us that we have our matrix build and that two jobs completed, and we can click on that and see which ones completed and which ones didn't. GitHub Actions give developers the ability to automate their workflow. It can be used for tests, building assets, and running tools to refactor our code. There's a small amount of setup in to be involved, but it's very easy to use afterwards. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you follow, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us covered, or did you use this video to set up your own GitHub Actions? If so, let me know in the comments below or send me a message at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. I would love to know how I can help you, and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel, signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank <music> you.